Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Both, joined by Drew Galloway, continuing our previewing of positions for the Wildcats. And today we move to the secondary where K-State, kind of an interesting situation where the safeties, I think you feel pretty good about what K-State's going to roll out there. They've got some really talented, proven guys. They also have some new intriguing depth there. And then the corners, you have some returners, but you might also have to rely on some more unproven guys. So uh, let's start with the corners, Drew. How would you uh, kind of designate what they're going to look like this upcoming season? I, I think that corner is probably the spot on the defense that I probably have the most questions about, uh, just because Keenan Garber still relatively new to the position, got a lot better near the end of last season. Uh, and then Jacob Parrish, still a relatively young player, but he also improved. So I'm, I'm interested to see, and like my question with the corner, the cornerback room is how big of a leap can those two make? Uh, because I think that that will kind of hinge and will kind of dictate how the rest of the defense plays for K-State, because I think that they're pretty solid everywhere else. But corner is probably the one spot where I hesitate a little bit. Uh, adding Jordan Dunbar as a late transfer is a big time addition, I think, because it adds another older player into the room that has lots of experience and lots of talent. And Chris Kleiman wasn't afraid to kind of talk about how talented he thinks he is. Uh, but then, beh but behind Dunbar, you kind of have a lot of unproven guys as well. With Justice James, uh, has played uh, a relatively small role so far this uh throughout his career can Nigel thomas is still a really young player donovan mcintosh is still a really young player so i i think that it's kind of a how far along can you bring some of these other guys because i think that you have a pretty solid top two and i think that jacob Parrish and keenan garber are just going to continue to get better but how can you bring guys along behind them because cornerback is a spot just like linebacker what we talked about yesterday that case they likes to rotate in and out so can you get that fourth player that you feel comfortable with? Well, and so with the corners, and you say that they're the least certain group on this defense, is that just somebody has to get that notation, or is this truly a shaky unit for K-State moving forward with the season? I think it has more to do with how young – Jacob Parrish still is. I mean, he's a true junior and was somebody that didn't really play a whole lot on the defensive side of the ball his true freshman season. So last season was first full time as a cornerback and not really playing a lot of special teams. So I think that it's more of you need that guy to really be the distinguished player. And I think that they don't necessarily have that right now, which isn't a bad thing, again, because I think that Keenan Garber and Jacob Parrish both have super high potentials because of how young Parrish is and how relatively inexperienced at corner Keenan Garber is. So if you kind of see how they bring along and if you hear a lot of good things from the cornerback room at fall camp is where I think that you'll kind of see where K-State is at defensively. Because like I said, I think that they're really, really solid everywhere else. Corner, I just have a little bit of a pause just Garber and Parrish also not the tallest or the longest players either. So that, that's one of where uh, playing against Arizona week three with uh, McMillan kind of gives me a little bit of a hesitation. All right, let's move on then to the safeties, because if you don't feel good about corner, you should feel good about safety. Marquis Siegel is getting a lot of love uh, in, you know, the, the preseason type of stuff. And, VJ Payne has been a, around for a while now, and it feels like the safety situation kind of flipped early, middle part of the, the season last year where they kind of resituated where guys were playing, and the safeties feel like a pretty big strength moving forward. Yeah, I think that if corner is the one spot where I really have a hesitation on, I think safety is probably where I would have KC at the top defensively as a position group uh, because I, I think that all three guys that are going to be starting uh, this season with Jordan Riley, Marquis Siegel, and VJ Payne, I think all three could be NFL guys by by the time that it's all said and done. And then I really like the the depth behind them. Colby McAllister played a little bit last season as a reserve for uh, Marquis Siegel, but 
I think that he's somebody that has a bright future. Uh, Jack Fabris played uh, the first three games before getting shut down to redshirt. And, and I just think that there's some other bright pieces like Wesley Fair and the safety room that are really kind of coming along. And I think that that's probably the room that is maybe the strongest, not just on defense, but potentially even the entire team. What 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 do you expect in terms of guys being able to make plays from that safety spot? Because we've seen over the last few years, guys have been able to kind of show up and like think about this too. With discussing the how deep this room is, like Kobe Savage has a year of eligibility left. He's playing at Oregon this year. Like they lost the guy that the last two years has been a pretty productive member of their defense. So uh, what does it say about K-Stead that they were able to kind of come come through this on the other side and still feel really good about that position? Yeah, I think that it shows how good k is in the transfer portal uh, because they lost Kobe Savage, and then like two or three days later, Jordan Riley was immediately on campus and then commits. So I think that just kind of shows – kind of like the the flexing of the muscle by K-State and how they can really sell transfer safeties. I, I mean, there's a chance that both Marquis Siegel and Jordan Riley get drafted, and Russ Yeast has already been drafted as a transfer safety. So you're kind of seeing, and Josh Hayes, uh, 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 Josh Hayes after uh, Russ Yeast, so you're kind of seeing a little run on transfer safeties for K-State, and that's something that they can really sell. And especially this year, you get two more. And I don't really have any hesitations about uh, the playmaking. Marquis Siegel, we we discussed it before. He was in position all the time last year and just couldn't make the play. If he can make the play this year, he'll be fine. VJ Payne has shown a knack to make big plays. And Jordan Riley in that one game that Ball State has played against Georgia was probably one of his better games. So I, I don't really have any hesitation about the safety group, and I'm I'm really excited to see how they all get deployed. Two guys you mentioned there. You mentioned Dunbar and Riley, two transfers factoring in. We've obviously seen, you know, Julius Brents come through as a transfer. Uh, I mean, you, you can kind of go down the list. Josh Hayes was a transfer. Kobe Savage was a Juco transfer. K-State has been really good at doing this. And is that a trend that's going to continue, uh, specifically with the guys that you mentioned, and then also moving forward, like, does it seem like the direction K-State's going in terms of building depth at these positions and guys that are going to come through, hey, we're going to try and find at least one transfer or defensive back every year that we think can instantly play because of how valuable those type of players are, especially in the Big 12? And then I think just in addition to that, I would throw in um, just kind of the nature of the position with cycling guys in and out. Yeah, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. I think that especially in the Big 12, like you talked about, having experience in the secondary is invaluable. And if you can get that guy that has played football at either the JUCO level for two years or the Power 4 or the G5 level, I think that you're kind of seeing that KC wants to bring those guys in because they have kind of seen the rounds and know what college football is. And I think that that's kind of the wheelhouse that k State is stuck in. And I think that that's a good thing because they, they've had a lot of success in the transfer portal, not just in the secondary, but just in general overall. And I think it's just finding guys that really know how to play the game and fit your culture and will do whatever it takes to win. I mean, Marquis Siegel and Josh Hayes are with corners and moved to free safety at K-State, which is essentially another corner spot on the field. But it, it still takes a lot of learning and a, it's a position change that, a lot of guys probably don't want to make or didn't have to make, uh, but Josh Hayes and Marquis Siegel have done it. Yeah, and they've done it. They've done it very well. So we'll see how it continues to play out for K State uh, over this season and in years to come. Now that K State is kind of establishing themselves in that market. So, all right. Well, that will do it for us today. We will be back again tomorrow. A uh, get excited, Drew. We're going to talk special teams tomorrow. Ooh. Uh, preview everything going on there because everybody's going to be interested in, hey, who's going to return kicks? K-State did not have a kick or punt return for a touchdown last season uh, because those prudes of referees in the Pop-Tarts Bowl stole one from Seth Porter. Um, I guess those guys just don't like fun and you know letting, letting good guys have good things happen to them. Uh, nasty work by them. Uh, and then also there's obviously going to be a new punter 
this year. We'll see how that's going for K-State. And uh, we'll see if Drew is as confident in Chris Tennant as Derek Young always seems to be. So that and a whole lot more on special teams tomorrow when we reconvene for the KSO Show. If you want more about the Cats in the meantime, head over to On3, find kstateonline.com, and uh, just revel in the fact that K-State landed a top-rated tight end and is going to hang on to him, unlike uh, the folks unlike out, team. Yeah, out in the Pacific Northwest. Shout out to the Ducks. Uh, lovely time to be recruiting tight ends if you're anybody not named Oregon. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.